we are immediately confronted by the fact that there are two poles that determine the way we think. One is, in a sense, universalism, one is particularism. For example, you think of a triangle. A triangle is a triangle, it's a universal mathematical concept. But you never see a triangle, you say this triangle, you're playing pool and there is that triangular figure you put the balls in. And that's a particular triangle. And so our experience oscillates, both mentally and outwardly, between what you call the universal and the particular in the philosophical sense. You see incredible universal characteristics which manifest themselves in all the religions. For example, do unto others as others would have to do unto you, or some formula similar to it, is different from specific moral action in different religions. But it's a spiritual moral quality that is, is universal, as you find everywhere. So everywhere whether you're within Christianity, Judaism, Islam, Buddhism, Hinduism, Shintoism, wherever you are, in a sense you have a particularity of that universal principle. On the metaphysical level, it's even more evident. First of all, reality is not exhausted by the physical world in which we live. This reality has a transcendent and imminent aspect to it. And between us that, and that reality, which is boundless and without finitude, there are levels of reality which separate us. Prayer philosophy also respects particularity within each religion and considers it to be very important because there is no path to either truth or the truth without being a path. For example, Islam has a remarkable universal characteristic which it shares, let's say, with Christianity and Judaism. But at the same time, it has its own particularity. For example, the adamant refusal to distinguish between the kingdom of Caesar and the kingdom of God. Even the word secularism doesn't exist in Arabic and Persian. And the way now we are not trying to force the separation upon Middle Eastern countries is never going to work because uh, it doesn't go with how they understand God and themselves and the role of religion and life and everything else. We live in a world today in which, whether we like it or not, awareness of other world views, other religions, other cultures has become a necessity. And therefore, perennial philosophy has a very important role to play in revealing both the universality of religious truth and the particularity of religion in different climes with which Western men or Eastern men come in contact today. But Islamic philosophy, like traditional Christian Jewish philosophy, like Hindu philosophy, is one of the great schools of perennial philosophy and it itself, in a sense, is both universal, the aspects of it which reconfirm the perennial philosophy, and as particularities which pertain to the Islamic world where it has grown and manifested itself.